Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really good match for you here with a super interesting team, kind of full of just some random dudes. If you're into that kind of thing, hey, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k, and the support is greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and get into the match. All right, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Pinata, aka Glamora. This is not a Pinata you want the candy from. Essentially, you touch this thing, and it sends out its toxic spikes, and you just get some poison-ass candy. So... I lead off with the Mudsdale, and this gives me an opportunity to go for the Stealth Rock. We're both just basically going to go ahead and compare rocks here. Uh, of course, this thing does have the ability to spin it away. I figure I just go for the Stealth Rock regardless, uh, in case they, they don't like the matchup here. Anyway, it does still have the Air Balloon, so of course I can't Earthquake this thing. And honestly, Glamora is such a massive pain in the ass. This thing is always, always a problem. It goes for that Mortal Spin, gets away my Stealth Rock, and it does get a regular Poison on the old Horsey. So... This is kind of a weird matchup because I do want to keep this thing around. It's good as a check for their Okie Dogie, and I, I would like to conserve as much HP as possible, but I do need to break this thing's air balloon and get this thing taken care of. So I go for the Heavy Slime there. That is, of course, going to bust open the Pinata, and we do have some Toxic Spikes around. As It's a situation where I do have the Poison type and the Venomoth on my team, so I can always soak up those Toxic Spikes and get rid of them later. So it's not really a huge priority for me to be able to like avoid those Toxic Spikes. So... Uh, at this point, I'm just going to go for an Earthquake here as they end up going for the Endure. They're going to guarantee that they can essentially you know, get up the two layers of the Toxic Spikes. It's going to give a Toxic Poison to whatever switches in. And again, super annoying Pokemon. It just endures the hit, spreads around some more than Poison Legos. And at least at this point, Mudsdale doesn't have a bad Poison. Having a regular Poison is actually fine. I kind of I closely counter it with my leftovers and honestly, not a super big deal. So... I do expect them to want to switch out here. I'm thinking maybe they go into High Dragon, expecting the Earthquake. I'm instead going to go for the Body Press. Uh, body Press is an interesting setup on this Mudsdale, of course. If you can start to get a lot of uh, a lot of defense boost from that stamina, it can be a huge problem. But they end up going into Han Slolo, with goaded nickname. But, of course, this thing somehow... Imagine this fat-ass horse landing on you. It doesn't take any damage. And Slow King basically don't give a shit. So... I do not really want to take a Scald here. Again, I'm slowly getting whittled down by this Poison, and I want to keep this in the back as a check uh, for their physical attackers later, potentially be able to get up that Stealth Rock. And at this point, I do still need to kind of handle the Toxic Spikes that are on my side, so I can't really directly switch into the Venomoth. They could predict that, go for a Psychic move, and I'm having a bad time. So instead, I'm actually going to switch into the Hisuian Braviary. I come in, I've got my boots on, I'm not going to take Stealth Rock damage, and of course, I'm not going to touch the ground. Uh, to get that Toxic Poison, so I can bring this in relatively freely here, as I'm a bulky set, able to handle special attacks, plus I have Calm Mind. Instead, however, they tell me a shitty joke and they go for the Chili Reception, and literally nobody laughs, not even the Granny in the back, so this thing decides to basically bail out, and now they get a switch into whatever they like. It's actually a really good pivot move with the Slow King there, as now this allows them to go into the Inteleon. Honestly, I'm not even afraid of Inteleon. Uh, again, I am max actually HP, so I know I can take an attack from this thing, and they end up going for the Terra. So them committing the Terra here is actually important. They're going to go for that Water Terra, Inteleon, the skinny queen that Inteleon is. Now has a fountain on top of its head. And they can go for a Scald. With that extra boost, it's still not going to quite be able to take out the Braviary here, which is actually amazing. This is exactly why we want to run uh, with the bulky set. So I go for an Esper Wing, and while it doesn't quite knock it out, it is going to give me a speed boost. However, they actually don't know that I'm not faster than them, even after that speed boost, so they're actually going to end up switching out, going to go right back into the Slow King. Of course, this thing is looking healthy as shit because it does have the Regenerator ability, and, you know, the Esper Wing is not going to do a whole lot of damage, but, again, I'm actually kind of fine with this matchup. Now, at this point, I've got myself a nice little plus one in speed, and I know that I can, essentially, I can roost, I can take an attack from this thing, start to set up Calm Minds, and before you know it, Hisuian Braviary, you got to... You got a problem on your hands. The bird is, in fact, the word. So I go for the roost here just to see, kind of scout what they want to do. Uh, it's actually just going to go for the scald again. So I'm just taking hot water to the face all damn day out here. But it probably feels good. It's snowing out here. We're just taking a nice little hot shower. So uh, at this point, I'm going to go for the calm mind. Thinking after plus one special defense boost, there's a chance I can take a scald here. Um, so I get that calm mind up, and I could potentially start to roost. Once I get more speed boost with the Esper Wing, we're going to have ourselves a time. However, uh, they do actually just end up finishing me off with a Scald that gets a critical hit, and yeah, I spoke too soon. The Scald is in fact going to take care of me. Uh, so down goes the Braviary, and that's unfortunate. However, I was able to at least get Chip on the Inteleon. That is you know, a super fast Pokemon that's annoying to deal with, so now it's kind of in range for... I can outspeed it with the Mianxiao in the back, 
and uh, hopefully take care of it. So, at this point, I have a free switch, and I decided to go into the Venomoth. This thing is an extremely scary Pokemon if you do not deal with it correctly, so what I'm going to do is just go right for the Sleep Powder. See if they want to switch, they decide to end up just staying in, and that is amazing. Put little, put little Hans Lolo to sleep, and at this point, I'm going to basically show him my little my dance moves. However, with your eyes closed, you're not going to be able to see it, so honestly kind of rude of the Slow King over here. I want to I want to basically be able to start setting up as many Quiver Dances as possible because I'm going to be able to outspeed anything after just about one and then after like two I'm starting to get huge damage on pretty much anything especially with Venomoth's Tinted Lens ability you actually get um, increased damage if it's not very effective so you basically cannot resist this thing and I'm over here just flapping my wings staring back. Venomoth always looked like he's staring at me he's kind of a creepy little dude but uh, you know, he does not see my dance moves there, and I figure, hey, uh, you didn't see him that time. Let me let me go ahead and show you show you this one more time. I'm gonna go for the two quiver dances because, you know, I do need all the help I can get at this point. Luckily, Slowking is gonna stay asleep here, so it kind of puts me in a situation where you don't want to get overly greedy with the quiver dances. So I figure at this point, it's probably it's time to start buzzing. I can knock out the Slowking for free. I don't care how specially defensive you are. The Buzz is going to take this thing out, and that's a great Pokemon to take care of because it's an easy special switch in for them. Uh, and now I get to see kind of what their answer is going to be to the Venomoth. Again, I'm faster than everything at this point, and I can also go for another Sleep Powder. However, they're going to go into Okie Dogi, where I really should have probably gone for a third Quiver Dance. Because as you're going to see, I go for the Sludge Bomb, actually thinking it might have been enough damage, but it is actually barely able to live. Fires off a knockoff, and that does take care of the Venomoth. So I had a couple different options there and probably have gone for the misplay. I, I could have gone for a sleep powder, put that thing to sleep. I always run the risk of the miss happening though, so I didn't want to go for that. Plus, um, you know, I should have quiver danced a third time, but like I said, Slowking could have woken up, uh, you know, psychic crit through the quiver dance boost and had a bad time. So at least I'm able to get good chip on the Okie Dogie. Again, the chip is all I'm looking for. I have chip on the Inteleon, I have chip on the Okie Dogie, and this thing is sitting at one HP. I end up going into Mudsdale and go for the Stealth Rock, which, again is not the optimal play I, I figure if they leave that thing in and allow me to get my stealth rock up it's super good for my late game however they just switch back into the goddamn glamora you cannot count this thing out with the focus sash it's still chilling at one hp it comes in for free uh just avoiding the stealth rock and now i find myself in a pretty bad spot because this thing can go for its endure bullshit it's able to take a hit basically just fires off some more toxic spikes and then i have to hit it one more time to be able to uh, to knock it out, but then it gets another layer of toxic spikes, but it's actually not the end of the world as I'm looking at the remainder of the matchup here I can kind of clean up the game with the Mian Shao if I play it correctly And I don't really care that much about uh, the poison because I'm not going to be taking a lot of hits on stuff anyway uh, Other than Mudsdale, so that's why I'm kind of fine with with this trade-off here in this thing being able to uh, You know get up back again the toxic spikes where Venomoth's already dead, so I can't soak him back up I finished this thing off with a heavy slam. Finally, good to see this bastard dead uh, while they do get up that second layer of the toxic debris. So, uh, Mudsdale's in a spot where it's not looking like I'm actually a great answer to Okie Dogie at this point, and I really should have gone for the Earthquake uh, on that Okie Dogie as they switch into the freaking, the freaking flower. But, it's all said and done, and at this point, we must adapt. But I do have the Mian Shao in the back, and with the Choice Scarf, I'm feeling confident that I have a little late game sweeper. So, on the free switch, they're going to end up going into the Inteleon once again. Uh, I'm fine with this. Mudsdale essentially can can go down here because of the fact that Okie Dogie does have that chip on it. Uh, I don't really need this as my check to it. So I allow them to finish me off with a Scald, and that is going to allow me a little revenge switch. So it is time to bring out Old Floppy. Literally, Mian Shao is one of the most fun Pokemon to work with because with Regenerator, you're able to pivot so easily and get health back, and it's super fast, especially with the Choice Scarf, we're often the fastest Mon on the field and we can just hit extremely hard. So what I'm going to do is come in, take a poison for pretty much no reason. I'm going to end up going for the U-turn. Uh, it's a good cover play because if they do switch, I essentially can grab a matchup. They do not switch, however, and down goes the Inteleon. So it's actually really important that they committed their Terra there because now I can play a lot safer against Pokemon like that High Dragon that I know can't change type. And in keeping Min Shao in the back is essentially my win condition here. So. On the empty battlefield, I'm going to bring in Tubby. He says, hey, where where are all my friends at? What the hell? He comes in and nobody wants to hang out with him. He does also get poisoned. He says, this is a shitty party. Okay? The candy here poisons you in not a, not a fun time. So 
Uh, this allows them to go into wherever they want against the Snorlax here, and that is going to be, of course, the Okie Doge. So, with the Doge being at the health it's at, I feel like a juicy drain punch against Snorlax looks extremely enticing. So, what I'm going to do is go for the Terra Ghost. That's basically going to allow him to punch right through me, and then I finish it off with a Body Slam. So, that is the plan, and we basically just kill our Snorlax for the sake of hoping that they go for that, uh, that drain punch. Which, look at how juicy Snorlax was looking over there. You got to drain punch him here. However... They actually just end up going for the knockoff, which might have been the craziest play of all time. Predicts the Ghost Terra, and luckily I'm actually able to live that, and then fire off a Body Slam and still knock out Okie Doge. But, what that does is, it puts me in range to where now the Tauros can easily knock me out with uh, just a Raging Bull. And we've got ourselves a, a, a basically 2-2 match here. I have Pikachu in the back, along with the Menchow, and he has the Tauros and the Hydreigon. So, they bring in the Tauros. Essentially, I can't switch here, I can't afford... Right, for any switches, I just go for an Earthquake. They just finished me off with the Raging Bull. And that knockout, knockoff play was kind of nuts, not going to lie. So, Snorlax goes down while I was able to knock out the Okie Doge. It it's basically allows me now a Revenge Switch. And unfortunately, Mian Shao does not quite have enough damage to kill this thing with a close combat. So what I'm going to do is bring in Pikachu. I'm straight up bringing Pikachu to competitive matches to see if this thing can possibly uh, be useful. And here's where it gets interesting. I do actually have access to the Surf. And this Tauros ends up being a defensive set rather than plus speed nature. I'm able to outspeed. Surf barely, <laughs> barely doesn't knock it out. It knocks it down to its citrus berry. Um, and at this point, it finishes me with the body press. Literally, you, touch, you breathe on Pikachu and it dies. So, uh, you know, not, not a whole lot involved at that point. But what that does is sets up the Mian Shao for the late game sweep that we have been looking for. And finally, Floppy's time to shine his come. I can bring this thing in. I can obviously outspeed and finish it off with the close combat. I was able to get the amount of damage I needed to put this thing in range to die to the CC. And all we can say is thank god this thing was a defensive set and Pikachu was able to get that damage that we did. It would have been sick if I was able to grab the kill with the Surf there, but you know, Pikachu actually contributed to the squad here and that's my little dude right there. So their final Pokemon is again going to be the Hydreigon. I've been saving Mian Shao with the close combat knowing that this does like 160% to it. And they cannot commit a Terra because they, of course, use it on the Inteleon. So all I got to do here is go for that close combat, beat up each one of those heads individually, and that is going to finish off the game. So that was a super close match. Honestly, well played. Uh, I had a lot of misplays on my end, but luckily, uh, with the Scarf Man Shao in the back, you can, anything can happen. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support on these videos, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.